dawn in medieval Italy, a single book arrived like a quiet threat, its pages carrying a pattern that would change how Europe counted, traded and imagined the future. The year was 1202. Markets were loud with bargaining voices, coins clinked in leather purses and merchants trusted numbers scratched in Roman symbols, slow, clumsy marks inherited from the past. Into this world stepped a man shaped by travel and curiosity, Leonardo of Pisa. He had wandered the ports of North Africa as a boy, listening to Arab scholars speak a language of numbers that flowed like water, simple, flexible, alive. When his book Liber Abaci appeared, it didn't announce a revolution, it whispered one. Leonardo asked a strange question inside its pages, not about kings or wars, but about rabbits. If a pair of rabbits produces another pair every month and those offspring mature and reproduce the same way, how fast does life multiply? The answer unfolded gently at first, one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, each number born from the two before it like generations leaning on memory. At first no one noticed, Roman numerals still ruled Europe, carved into stone and law, but merchants began to feel the difference. Calculations that once took hours suddenly took minutes. Profit could be predicted, interest could be measured, risk could be weighed. The new numbers didn't just count money, they made thinking faster. Then came resistance. Church officials distrusted the strange symbols, especially the zero, a circle that seemed to represent nothing, yet held terrifying power. Some cities banned the numerals outright, fearing fraud, chaos, even heresy. But curiosity is hard to silence. The numbers kept spreading, passed hand to hand like contraband wisdom. Here's the twist no one expected. Leonardo's rabbit sequence wasn't just a puzzle. Artists would later see it in spiralling shells. Architects would feel it in balanced proportions. Nature itself seemed to hum along to this rhythm. A merchant's math problem had revealed a hidden heartbeat of the world. By the time Europe realised what had happened, it was too late to turn back. The Fibonacci sequence had slipped into trade, science, art and thought, not as a conqueror, but as a guide. It taught Europe that growth follows patterns, that order can emerge from simplicity, and that the future often arrives quietly, disguised as a question. If this story sparked your curiosity, take a moment to like, share and subscribe. Leave a comment below, because the next hidden pattern might begin with you.